an inclusive web on using preference media queries to make your site work for everyone. Hi, I'm Killian, the creator of Polypane, the browser for building responsive and accessible websites. And I'm here to tell you about user preference media queries. A little over a decade ago, there was a paradigm shift in web development. In 2010, the term responsive design was introduced as a way to describe how we can make websites adapt to the screen size by reflowing and repositioning content as the available space allows. But we can adapt to more than just screen sizes. With responsive websites, we can have a design that's responsive, as well as a website that adapts to user preferences, providing an experience catered to each user's unique needs. Here's how. Browsers are implementing a new set of media queries that let developers respond to preferences that the user might have as to how a website should look and work for them. In this presentation, I'll go over each, but due to time limits, we won't be spending a ton of time with them. I'll link to more resources at the end of this presentation. With Prefer's color scheme, or as most of us call it, dark mode, a user indicates whether they prefer to see a light or dark version of your site. Users might prefer a dark version because it's easier on their eyes or a light version because it usually has more contrast. Using the Prefer Color Scheme media query, we can check for both dark and light. There used to be a no preference option, but it got removed since it was essentially the same as light mode. Most of you will have a website in light mode. Adding a dark mode from scratch can be a big project. If you want to add dark mode, but don't have a lot of time, you can use cheap dark mode. It works like this. First, we invert the entire page using the invert filter. This makes everything that's dark light and the other way around. Unfortunately, what this also does is invert the hue. So anything that's blue becomes orange, for example. That's not great. You can't have your brand color suddenly be different. So we use another filter to rotate the hue by 180 degrees, which means we end up with the original hue. It won't match your colors perfectly, but it's usually close enough. At this point though, images and videos will look pretty bad, so we need to fix that. We can fix that by adding an invert and U rotate filter again, basically undoing the previous one. At this point, the background hasn't changed so long, so we have to add an explicit background color. This one's dark gray, but you can also add a little bit of color depending on what works best for your site. I do advise not using full black because it's usually too contrasting. Now, this isn't perfect and it's not as good as a fully custom dark theme, but it will get you something decent and a few lines of code. And here's what that would look like. On the left, the regular side and on the right, the cheap dark mode one. Users can indicate they want to see less stuff happening on screen with the prefers reduce motion media query. The reason they want to do this can be things like motion sickness, vestibular disorders, or just that they don't have time to wait for your nice animations. If a user has this turned on, it doesn't mean you can't show any motion, but you have to be mindful. Use motion only where it helps understanding and prefer animations that fade rather than move. And for videos, make sure you don't autoplay them. In terms of CSS, this is a Boolean. It's either on with reduce or off with no preference. The best way to approach this is to consider motion as a progressive enhancement. Design your site without motion and only add in animations when the user has no preference set. But if that's not an option or the site is already built, you can use the prefers reduce motion reduce option to turn animations off. For example, with cheap reduce motion. Now, this is very crude. It will just turn all animations and transitions off. You can see some weird values here, like minus one milliseconds. That's to make sure that any JavaScript APIs that depend on animation end will still be called. If you do this, make sure that everything is still visible. For example, with transitions from transparent to opaque. While the previous media queries are supported across browsers, the next few have no or limited support. 
so consider them a preview of what we can do in the near future. Not everyone is lucky enough to have fast or reliable internet or unlimited data plans. Browsers can send the saved data on header and web servers can then choose to send smaller images and videos and disable any form of preloading, server push or polling. Doing this on a server, however, is often hard to do because you as a developer or designer lack access to the server configuration or the configuration requirements are just too complex for your current system. That's unfortunate because it can have a big impact on who gets to see and use your website. Luckily, coming up is the Prefers Reduce Data media query. It's not available in browsers yet, but you can emulate it in Polypane and after changing some settings in Chromium. Though you can do less with it than the HTTP header, which, you, which would let you send an entirely different website, this is much more accessible for implementers. You can prevent downloading fonts and background images or choose to download smaller images. And in JavaScript with the Match Media API, you can prevent preloading and polling. We don't have time to get into it, but check out the blog post I wrote at bit.ly slash prefers reduce data. Now, prefers contrast indicates whether your user wants to show your site with less or more contrast. It's supported in Chromium and partially in WebKit, which only supports the prefers contrast more option. It can be difficult for people with a visual impairment to pick up subtle differences in color and they will prefer more contrast. On the other hand, people with light sensitivity issues might prefer a screen with less harsh contrasts. More and less contrast make sense, but what does custom mean? Custom will match when a user has forced colors turned on. The idea is that you can then use a single media query, prefers contrast without a value, to reduce the overall visual complexity of your site in a number of different situations. I don't think this is particularly clear or useful, but we don't have time to get into that. Moving on. With prefers reduced transparency, users can indicate they want to see text on a solid background. They want this usually due to visual impairments, making it hard to read text on patterned backgrounds, but it can also help people with dyslexia or concentration problems. Unfortunately, there is no browser support yet. Like reduce motion, there's two options, and once support lands, consider again to make the reduce case the default and only add your transparencies when the no preference media query matches. The next two media queries do not have a prefers prefix, since they do not require you to make changes. However, you can use them to detect changes and compensate for them. Inverted colors is a Mac only feature and forced colors is a Windows only feature. The inverted color setting on Mac will invert all the colors on your screen, including websites. So you might think you need to use this media query to double invert images and videos like we did for cheap dark modes, but Safari already does this for you. You can however use shift your entire site to make sure your brand colors are still followed. In general, I think the dark mode in macOS and the prefers color scheme media query are the successors to this particular setting. So use those instead. The values look like this. It's either none or inverted. On the Windows side, we have forced colors, which map to the Windows high contrast mode. Windows high contrast mode lets users specify and override all the colors on their OS. Usually, this is used to create high contrast black on white or white on black color schemes, but it can also be used for sepia or even wilder color schemes. Users can configure this as they want. So high contrast mode is a bit of a misnomer. To reiterate, this media query does not begin with prefers because your browser has already overwritten all the colors on your site to make everything uniform with the rest of your operating system. The active value will tell you if it's active or not. In addition, if a white text on black background color scheme is chosen, prefers color scheme dark will match. Because all the colors have already been overwritten by the browser, 
there's not really much for you to do, except make sure that things like SVG icons are still visible and to add borders to elements that previously were differentiated by a background color. And because you don't know how, which color scheme the user decided to use, you can't use your own colors for this. Instead, you can use these CSS color names. But what if your colors are important? For example, when you're showing color swatches for a product in a web shop. You can opt out of forced colors with the forced colors adjust none CSS property and value. Make sure to use that just for the elements where your chosen colors are important and not for entire pages and sections. Now, these three options, forced colors, preferred contrast and inverted colors, seem similar but do not serve the same purpose. Forced colors overrides all your styling to something your user wanted, often with significantly increased contrast. With first contrast, it's your job to increase the contrast, but the user would still like to see your design. Lastly, inverted colors has no such explicit goal. It's mostly used to make screens less bright. This was, in a nutshell, the user preference media queries that you can use to make your site truly responsive to your visitor. I'm Kilian Falkov, and you can find me in these places. Please check out Polypane, and if you want to read more about all the media queries, check out bit.ly slash all-media-queries. Thank you.